Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and we are live here in Barcelona, Spain for exclusive coverage of uh, HP Discover. Uh, we're here uh, with uh, Alistair Winner, VP of HP Technology Services. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, glad to be here. So, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, Dave and I have been talking about all, all month and year has been the convergence of cloud, mobile, and social, big data, really wrapping it all up. We had uh, Robert on from uh, the Autonomy Group, and, and um, you know, the biggest challenge right now is not what to do, when to do it. Well, what maybe, but you, customers need help, right? So there's they a do. lot of yes, yes, yes. We want to do cloud, we want to do this. A lot of investment, so um, my first question is, Explain to the folks out there um, what you guys do, right? Because sure. I want to dig into some of the, some of the use cases. So, so share with the folks your role and some of, the, some of the things that you guys work on with customers. Sure, well, with pleasure. So I work as part of our technology services uh, business, uh, part of our enterprise group. And I have a specific focus on uh, our networking solutions and also our mobility uh, solutions. So I look after our portfolio, and, and really we create our point of view. So it's really exactly as you say. It's how do we help our customers navigate the uh, the world of uh, of uh, networking and mobility to deliver business value from their uh, technology investments. So we had uh, Scott Weller on yesterday morning. Kicked off the whole event, and he's always a great guest. And uh, you know we always talk when we see Scott. Hey, you know services are are not always talked about, but now now more and more it's mainstream. First conversation. Okay. I want to build and operate, I, but I got to service this thing. So a lot of the servicing conversation goes on in the cloud specifically in a lot of these converged areas uh, around what to do. Um, with OpEx being a big challenge. So, so what is the big OpEx challenge that customers have around the services? What are you seeing as the, the top three pain points and or demand that customers have? So I think for, uh, for me, it's um, you know, clearly returning the value as soon as they can. It's, it's um, you know, really driving the value quickly and uh, as and efficiently as possible. So um, you know, we have a number of um, solutions which are really focused on driving a, a true business outcome, driving time to value. I know Scott will have talked to you about flexible capacity services being one of the key uh, areas that we're really focused on during the show, uh, during the show this week. He said, uh, what did he say, Dave? Hybrid is a way of life. Yeah. <laughs> Hybrid <laughs> is a way of life. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott was a great soundbite. We actually made the headline of one of our blog posts. Um, but in all seriousness, what does that mean, right? So, so um, obviously, there's a lot of nuances. So what, what, what are the areas you see the most uh, pain point for customers? Is it security? Um, is it uh, the control? Is it the web cataloging? Is it the services? What are some of the, uh, the issues you see? So uh, I guess specifically in my area of the business, we're focused on the mobility uh, aspect of, uh, of, the, uh, of, of IT service delivery. And um, really what we see are IT companies and, and certainly IT uh, providers inside of organizations really struggling to maximize the value and, um, and, and deliver end user productivity to their, to their employees. So, um, yeah, many uh, many IT teams really are under threat from the um, from the availability of uh, IT services that you can download on your smartphone. Has the iPad been a big driver? I mean, obviously the consumerization of IT means okay, give me I got an iPhone or I got an Android device. They want that in the hands of users. Obviously, we saw that, we saw BlackBerry's market share plummeting over the past two years. Um, the traditional IT enterprise device. I mean, obviously mobility is about putting the apps in the hands of the worker, right? So we heard that yes. in the keynote from Meg Whitman. Um, what are some of the use cases you guys work on? Can you share with us uh, uh, some examples of, of engagements? Sure, no, absolutely. Well, we, we really look at the whole spectrum of, of mobility. Um, everything from the traditional keyboard, mouse-driven uh, solutions that uh, we're all very familiar with, um, all the way through the spectrum to uh, you know, um, smartphones and, uh, uh, and tablets. 
And really, you know, what we're trying to do is uh, essentially virtualize that, um, that engagement. So it's, it's really seamless delivery across whichever, whichever device that you use. Um, so we see a number of use cases uh, you know, in our engagement with, with, uh, with, uh, with customers. Certainly, um, we have a big fo focus on connecting people, so the social aspect that, 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 that you've described. Uh, yeah, we have a very strong partnership with uh, with Microsoft, and uh, yeah, we look at enabling link across you know the various uh, the various platforms. That seems to be a really uh, important area for uh, uh, for our customers. Um, we also look at things like uh, Exchange and actually having a hybrid a hybrid environment around Exchange and Office 365. So um, yeah, we really look at you know connecting people. We look at you know, making those apps available seamlessly across multiple platforms. Uh, and also we look at uh, we look at data, so things like SharePoint and Dropbox and you know, those types of, of of solutions, and really making them available um, you know, to a uh, you know, to a user on their uh, on their own personal device as well as you know, corporate so, providers. Now, so devices. what's the customer conversation sound like? First of all, who are you talking to when you go in? You know, before you know, in, in the consulting part of your business, who who are you talking to, and, and what are they asking you? What are the challenges they're facing? Is it is it BYOD? Are they trying to get you know, VDI slash end user computing going? Yes. Are they trying to get an app store up? Take us inside the conversation and yep. who are you having that conversation with? Yeah, I mean, it's all of the above. Um, I mean, we're, we're very much focused on helping enterprise IT. So it's, it's really the I, traditional IT department inside of, a, of an enterprise who have traditionally been the, you know, the control point of, um, uh, of IT. So they, you know, they would choose the device, they'd choose the apps, they choose the way that the, the, the user would connect with the apps. It really is um, that organization that we're really trying to help embrace what mobility is now. And they're frustrated, right? Because on the one hand, they're all mobile users, so they, it's not like they don't get it, <laughs> but they have to accommodate all this, this complexity. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. So it's, um, you know, it's a reality to these guys, and I guess they, uh, they're going through I guess a change process of one potentially being in denial to start through, I really want to control this, but actually you know, what we're encouraging our customers to do is to really embrace it and see it as a, a huge advantage. And actually it can help drive productivity uh, in their enterprise. So um, yeah, really we start with that as the premise for our consulting engagements. You know, we have a, a transformation experience workshop. It's a, a demonstration here on the floor where we really explore all of those elements. You know, it's BYOD, it's about having an intelligent edge of the network, it's about uh, cloud and the provision of uh, data that, you know, that then uh, gets um, presented on a, on, on a smartphone. There's a whole number of aspects. And what we typically see with an IT team is that they are absolutely working projects in each of these areas, but they maybe don't have a complete strategy. And, and that's really what we're helping them to do, is to build, build a strategy and then we can pragmatically help them along that, that journey using the, uh, the knowledge. Uh, and that strategy is obviously going to vary by the type of company, right? Because It will. Um, now, is there a big drive to get to try to make the mobile experience um, give access to apps? Is, is, is that a big drive or is it really sort of new apps that are, that are, that are mobile enabled? Um, combination. I, I mean, it really depends on the on the customer. I mean, we work with uh, a number of enterprises, and uh, you know, at one extreme, you'd have maybe a, you know a car manufacturer, car designer, who's really looking for a hosted desktop virtualized um, uh, solution, you know, which is uh, you know, very high intensity, high graphical capability, and they want the security and mobility of the of the uh, of, of the data. Through to you know another extreme, where actually it is about having. Um, you know, action-based apps on a phone, so you can literally approve things. You know, rather than having to log onto your, your yeah. laptop, you can just approve things uh, using the smartphone. So it's it's a whole spectrum, and every customer is different. Every customer has a different level of maturity, and really, what we do is we help help them to assess themselves and really set them on the right on the right path. And uh, and ultimately, our aim is to help them with with uh, end user products. What, what are you seeing in terms of who owns the device? Is it the company or the employee? Typically, I, mean, I know it varies, but but how it, would you break that down? I, I, I would say um, almost entirely, you know, a, 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 an employee will have at least one, if not two, personal devices. So even if you even if the enterprise does provide a device, I can guarantee the the employee will be bringing at least one, if not. So it's predominant two. that that it, the employee owns the device. Now, how are organizations handling the security aspects of of that? Um, 
because if you're going to bring your own device and you're going to put it on my network, it's got to be secure. Yes. So that's obvious, but it, it, there's also a data element as well. <laughs> like who owns the data? It might be your device, but I might own the data. How are organizations, or how do you advise people to sort of pace through that? If, you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you're going to put your data on, my data on your phone, and you're going to yep. leave the company, I'm going to have to scrub your, your phone. Absolutely. But yet that's my phone, it can't be scrubbing my contacts. So, how do you sort of square that circle? No, absolutely. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a real challenge, and um, I mean there are a number of uh, you know, um, technology solutions that we have that really enable policies on those on those devices. Uh, you know, and obviously, dependent on the enterprise, they'll want uh, far more rigorous security. I mean, even in HP, you know, we have uh, we have our own mobi mobility policy where. You have to before you download the the apps and have use of the data. You have to basically acknowledge that you know w the company has the right to essentially wipe the phone. Um, and of course, in wipe in the phone, not just the app. Correct, wipe it's, the phone. Yeah. So once you do that, you you've gone over to the you basically handed over the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, to your, yeah. To your So enterprise. I guess that's one extreme, and actually that's an HP provided phone. So well, but it's, it's, it's an it's an opt in. It is. It is an opt in. <laughs> it is an opt in. Um, but of course, you know, actually, the uh, the reality, especially in the enterprise, is very little of the data actually the real data resides on the on the smart device. It's all virtualized back in the data center, and uh, you know, we're just providing a, a window, which is essentially uh, you know, transportable across multiple platforms. That's uh, that's the idea. Well, but that data can be moved right, through the device to some it, other device. It, it can. Yeah. Can you, I mean, technology today presumably can, can actually, well, it certainly can, can know if something's been moved through there and then whether or not you have access to the target device is a whole other discussion. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it is. So that's interesting. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about networking. Um, sure. What do you see as the, as the state of networking? How would you describe the state of networking? How is that, that infrastructure you're changing and what's HP doing to sort of facilitate that transformation? Sure, well it's a really exciting area to be in and uh, uh, with HP networking and our partnership there, we're doing a lot of um, great innovative things with our, with our customers. I mean when you look at the, um, I guess the holy trinity of IT with servers and storage and, uh, and networking, uh, networking's really been the laggard of those, of those three. I mean you can spin up virtual machines and virtual partitions on, a, you know, on the server and the storage, but actually to do any changes on the network, you know, you're talking weeks, months, you know, it, it really is um, uh, highly, uh, highly complex, very slow. So, you know, the approach that we're taking with, uh, with HPN is really to simplify that experience, one operating system across all the, all the devices, and, uh, and making it um, you know, uh, programmable with, uh, with, with software, so with, with software-defined networking. So, although we're still at the early stages, um, you know, customers are really starting to understand the value proposition of, of an SDN network. And a lot of the work that we're doing is really helping our customers get ready for that, uh, ready for that journey. So again, you know, they, have a legacy in, uh, they have a legacy network that they're heavily invested in, you know, both from a technology perspective, they have people that are you know, experts in, in the legacy. So we need to help, we need to help build a very pragmatic uh, way to move to, uh, to an SDN enabled so I look at mobility as almost like the storm's coming. You know, you just can't stop it. You got to batten down and just accept it and get ready for it. Are, are, are the discussions around networking more prescriptive? In other words, are they part of a, a larger umbrella transformation around you know, a cloud or a big data? Yes. Or what, what, what can, can you talk about the, the, some of the big drivers there? Well, I think, I, I mean, for, for me, this whole move to software-defined uh, networking is driven by those big megatrends. Um, and they all have an impact. And, and they all mean that actually the network needs to be able to respond differently uh, because in every enterprise, at least two, if not all of those elements will, e will, will exist and actually coexist on the network. Mm. So dependent on you know, the, uh, the, you know, the time of the, uh, the month, the financial cycle, a project or initiative that a customer might be running, they need to be able to spin up capacity, you know, be able to adjust the uh, quality of service. And uh, you know, today, you know, the network is just a rigid thing. Mm. It, doesn't, it doesn't understand what's moving across it. So, um, you know, we're able to, to provide a level of intelligence and actually make it automated. So, you know, the, based on, again on some policies, the, you know, the network can actually adjust and tune itself without you know, having uh, an administrator having to do that. Alistair, a couple of questions I want to ask on around mobile, because this comes up all the time. Um, 
not everyone tests their app. So like, I know there's some conversations going around here at HP Discover, some testing labs and, and you know, a lot of hands-on stuff around some of the tooling available. But that brings up the question of um, apps, right? So apps, you know, are they going to be bulletproof? Are they tested? Do they meet the requirements? That brings up BYOD, bring your own device to work. Um, so so all, all that's kind of going on. So I want to get your take on those concepts uh, in context of the recent Amazon uh, announcement around VDI. So you see Amazon dipping their toe in the water, signaling, they got their public cloud, they got their public cloud, they got developers. But you see VDI coming out. VDI is back again, yeah. right? So again, <laughs> it's rearing its head again. But it's relevant now. With virtualization, you can do some things at the edge of the network. This brings up Internet of Things, a lot of coolness at the edge, mobility, whatever you want to call it. What's your take on that? Um, you got a cloud angle with the VDI, with Amazon's approach, which is kind of a signaling that, hey, it's really happening uh, and, 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 and this edge app world. What is going on in that market? I mean, you have the mobile device, okay, we talked about that, but the apps that are running, the workloads, yes. all these things underneath the hood. So that's, we've kind of talked about it with the, with the other, other technology, but talk about the edge, the app. What, what are customers doing? What are, the, what are the safeguards you need to take care of? Just get, give us some color around that, what, that dynamic. Sure. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's quite amusing, really, because we've been talking about VDI for, <laughs> uh, for, for, for many years. But it's the year but, of the VDI, right, again. No, <laughs> but, but it's really happening now. It People is, no, absolutely, no. We're, we're, we're through the hype curve, and, and it's a reality. And, and actually, there are, I mean, VDI is just one, one approach. And, and actually, we, again, we look at the whole, we look at the whole spectrum, uh, spectrum from server-based compute, which I guess is you know, actually presenting a, a very specific app on a very specific... Um, uh, client workstation, a and I think one of the most exciting things about the show, actually, the, uh, and the announcements we've made, is around HDI, so hosted um, with the with the Moonshot server and uh, actually having a complete um, you know virtual desktop in a Moonshot in a Moonshot cartridge. That's uh, that gives us another unique, uh, differentiated experience that we can offer to uh, 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 to our customers. I mean, from an app's perspective. Um, that, you know, again, customers are doing a, a whole variety of things. What I would say to you know today, the majority of the work that we're doing is is um, is actually providing what I'd, I'd call you know very basic services to uh, enterprise services to uh, customers. So it's about um, things like Link and um, uh, UC. It is it is um, basic apps like. Uh, email and uh, you know, Office 365, that, 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 that type of concept. So um, that's really where the main, the main focus is at the moment. Alistair, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE, it's awesome. I want to give you the final word. So I want you to put a bumper sticker on the car that's leaving Barcelona of the show, okay? Around the work you guys are doing with the customers. What's, the, what is the, what's on the bumper sticker of the car? Summarize the show in a bumper sticker. Wow. That's a real tough question, thank you. <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, life is good, you know, things are rocking. I mean, what's, come on, give me a bumper sure. sticker. Well, I, so the bumper come sticker on. for me around mobility would be universal access to people, apps, and data. That's what we're here to do. Universal access. Access to apps, people, and data. Man, that's a great bumper sticker. It's going to take the whole, remember the old bumper stickers, Dave? The old true bumper sticker. True bumper right. sticker. Alistair, appreciate it. This is theCUBE, John Furrier with Dave Vellante, here live in Barcelona, Spain. Exclusive coverage of HP, HP Discover. Um, we'll be right back with our next guest.